I am adding to my stimulus check portfolio today and I'm going to buy two different stocks. Both of them are stocks I'm really excited about and I've wanted to buy more of and now I am able to. I had to wait for the last $200 to come in for my 1200 deposit. If you haven't seen the last video, I bought $1,000 worth of stock in just a few minutes and I walk through what stocks I buy and why I buy it. Generally, if you haven't seen that video, the premise is I want to build a dividend portfolio that will pay me out monthly or quarterly dividends just because I wasn't going to use this $1,200 for a while. So I just want something that would pay me every month. So I am looking forward to showing you guys the next two stocks I'm buying. I am going to make a stock watch list video for what I'm buying in May. And I'm going to probably make that this weekend, so be on the lookout for that. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed so you can see that. But these two stocks I'm buying today, I'm really excited about. One, I actually want to buy in my M1 portfolio. And because I couldn't, uh, I'm doing a transfer in there, so it freezes the account. I'm going to do it here in Robinhood. So as you can see, my Robinhood portfolio is down a little bit. So it was up about $50 or so yesterday or the day before, but the market's gone down a few percent since then. So that is kind of where we're at now. Uh, I'm not worried about it or anything like that. I bought on a green day and then we had two more green days after that. So it is what it is. So I had figured out what I did wrong with my portfolio the other day. I thought I could buy fractional shares, but there's a wait list for that. So what I have to do is buy full shares of different stocks right now. So I have about $200 to work with. The first stock that I'm going to buy is called Qcom. Now, if you haven't heard of Qcom, they are the company that puts the chips into phones that help them connect to cell phone towers. So they are one of the largest chip manufacturers for cell phones for Apple, Verizon, AT&T, etc. So they are really well known because they are going to be the main producer of the chips that make 5G phones. So if you don't know what that is, that's the new network that's going to come out that's going to be much faster than what we have now. And they're planning on rolling that out partially in 2020, I believe, at the end of the year, and then heavy in 2021. I think that's going to be really huge because that's the way that the future is going. 5G is 100 times faster than 4G. So anything that you're doing right now on your phone, if you have to wait you know, a second or two for a page to pull up, it will be almost instantaneous. And as we progress, we're going to make that the new norm. Just like we can never imagine having to plug in your computer from the phone cord again and have to wait 30 seconds to a minute to get to a website. That's kind of where we'll be after we have 5G. Now, that's really important, not just for cell phones, but for things like self-driving cars. We definitely need to have that quick reaction time because that's the difference between life and death. So Qcom is one of the biggest players, if not the biggest player in that space. And I think that that's a really exciting thing to invest in. They also pay a nice dividend right now of about 3.5%, which they've been able to increase that about 5% as of just a few weeks ago. So that's good news that they're increasing the dividend. So I think that's a good long-term play for both appreciation and dividends. So I'm excited to invest in that one. The next stock though is the one that I'm really excited about and I guess it is a little bit sentimental. I got a bonus and picked this stock as my stock and then I researched it more and this is something that I've been wanting to invest more in. It's probably the stock that I'm most interested in investing more in and it's a real estate investment trust but it's in the Mary Jane space. We'll call it that just because I don't know how YouTube uh, likes it if I say the real word. So what it is is it's a company that buys the buildings from growers and leases it back to them. So if you own a Mary Jane growery and you start building it, you had built your own place because you had some initial seed money, but you get to the point where you really can expand heavily and kind of flush out your competitors, but you need an influx of cash. You can't go to the banks very easily because many banks won't lend just to companies in that space in general, just because of regulation and federal uh, law, they don't really wanna get tied up in that. 
and a lot of the banks are conservative, so they don't really want to have other people knowing that they invest in that. And then also, those companies typically don't earn that much because they're trying to grow so much that it's really hard to lend to a company that doesn't earn money. So they are growing so fast, but they don't really have much to show for it in the way of earnings. So this company will buy out the building, lease it back to them, possibly even do some improvements for them and increase the rent. So, so this company has been able to grow like crazy. I won't get too into the numbers, but let's just say this in 2016, they had revenues. So what they brought in of about half a million dollars in 2017, they had revenues of $6.4 million. So increased it 25 fold or something like that. In 2018, they went from 6.4 to 14.8, so over doubled it. In 2019, they went from 14.8 to 44.7, and that's basically tripling it in 2019. Now, the other thing to look at is their net income. So after expenses, how much money did they earn? In 2016, they earned negative seven and a half million. 2017, they earned negative 100,000. In 2018, they earned 7 million. In 2019, they earned 23.5 million. So they're just growing like crazy right now. And they're still doing acquisitions. They've had two acquisitions recently. In the time that we're in right now, there is a lot of pressure put on businesses. And a lot of the businesses that IIPR will buy buildings from can't get federal relief. There's a bill that's introduced right now in some of the harder hit states to allow those types of businesses to get relief from the CARES Act and other stimulus packages, but that hasn't gone through yet. So any of these companies that are bleeding money right now kind of have to lean on IIPR because they can't get any federal aid. They can't get any bank aid. So IIPR is coming in and saying, we'll buy your entire building and then they just lease it back to you. So you might get five, 10, 20 million and then just pay us 10,000 a month or whatever they do. But they're coming in like a knight in shining armor saying, we'll keep your business alive. And these leases are for 10 to 15 year leases. So they'll ride out the storm of whatever will come in the short term and they'll do quite well for a long time. Now IIPR is a growth play as you can see, it has increased revenues by like 300% a year or something like that. But it also pays really high dividends. So. It has been able to grow its dividend a large amount. It's paying over 5% right now, and it shows very little signs of slowing down. So it did declare a dividend of about a dollar again from the past quarterly dividend. Before that, we had been seeing increases every quarter, but that's understandable. They had increased at just around 30% from 78 cents a share to a dollar uh, at the fourth quarter of last year. So keeping a dollar is totally fine in my mind. Uh, I want them to have more liquidity to make more purchases, so that's good. But just for example, in 2017, when they started paying a dividend, they paid 15 cents. So they've been able to increase the dividend about seven times from what it started. And even just as of a year ago, they've already been able to increase it over 100%. So that's really exciting. If they did half of that in the next year, the dividend yield would be right around seven and a half to eight percent. So. If we get anything like that, that's really exciting. Now, if you followed my last video, I said that I wasn't gonna be investing in too many REITs in this Robinhood account, which was the plan, but I don't have access to my M1 portfolio and I really want to buy some more IIPR. But if you guys have heard of these companies, let me know. If you're planning on buying any of these companies, let me know. I think that they're two really good stocks to watch, even if you don't buy them. But we'll see here soon if they go up or go down. I could totally see another slight market dip or a slightly larger dip depending on what the economy does. But we will see here soon. I appreciate you guys watching. Please leave a like. It helps out the channel. If you guys want to invest with Robinhood, I have a link down below for you to get a free stock. I would also get a free stock, but it's a nice way to start out. You don't have to invest anything to get the bonus either. So if you just sign up, you can get the three to $500 stock and you can get Facebook or Berkshire Hathaway or Apple, I believe too. So, you know, if there's some good options there, if you can get any of those, that's cool. Otherwise I have my M1 link down there too. If you want to open up an M1 portfolio, I really like them. And I plan on making more videos 
in the future with them, but I appreciate it, guys. I will see you in the next video, and stay safe out there.